Oh, what happens if you're going to 11? Could you go to 12? Okay, what we're looking at here um, on this very early morning of uh, uh, AP Physics C E and M content is some of the things to know for the AP Physics C um, exam. And what I mean by this is uh, not in terms of like this is the content you need to know. We'll be going through all of that in these videos here, um, but more akin to uh, you know what you might need to know in terms of. Uh, just like weird little factoids of physics, okay? Um, one of the things to recognize is that we are throughout this unit going to, uh, we're gonna be trying to add a bunch of things up, okay? And as we may have talked about briefly in class, um, when we're adding a bunch of things up, uh, we could call this a summation, but if we wanted to do it more on a calculus level, we could call this an integral, okay? And I've already pointed this out, this is just fancy addition. Okay, it's fancy addition and really like you're just adding things up. Um, sometimes you'll see it as like a fancy area, uh, but really you're just adding a whole bunch of things up to get an answer, okay? Now, one of the interesting things is that when we add things up uh, in the world of physics, um, and we're gonna be trying this shortly in our next video, we're gonna try to add up things like electric fields. Um, but technically we can't do this uh, we're not allowed to just add up, um, well, we, we're trying to add up electric fields, but you may see me write it, because I'm a schlub, uh, you may see me write it as like, I'm trying to add up a number of tiny charges. And this is a bad idea, okay? Because whenever we start adding things up, um, I don't have individual charges sitting here. Um, what I'm actually going to think about is I'm going to think about all of these charges really represent a charge density. And because of this, this idea of saying I'm adding up like some number of charges, it's not a, it's not a good math move. What I can do instead is I can say, hey, look, you know, on some rod there is a charge density. And what I'll actually be doing is I will be fancy adding a distance, okay? I'm adding a distance up. Um, so we're allowed to we're allowed to add distances or even angles. Okay, we can do we can do that, um, but we can't just like sum up charges. That's not really a good idea to do in the world of calculus. Um, so we're gonna have to see how we can take this idea of a charge density and link that to distances. Um, some of the densities we'll be using here. Uh, there's three of them. Uh, one will be a lambda like this. This will represent a linear density. So it is some amount of charge per a length. Okay, so it's a linear density. It's as you have more charge, um, you're getting a longer length here. Uh, you could also have like a linear density for uh, how heavy like a cable is, you know, mass per length. Um, but this is a linear density. Uh, we can also have a surface area density, and you'll see this written in two ways. Um, for some reason, uh, sigma here sticks in my mind, but we can also see it as a zeta, uh, and you'll probably see that more often. Um, and this is a surface area density, so it's like some area here. Uh, and once again, it's just an amount of charge or something we have per area, okay? And the last kind that we're gonna have this year, and we're not probably gonna use it um, within this e &M unit, but we'll actually use it uh, for things like thermodynamics, is rho, oops, that's a bad rho, rho. Uh, and this is a volumetric. So it's some amount of charge or something you have per volume. Okay. Um, so these are just, they're all densities. They're some amount of something per length, per area, per volume. Um, but because that these have actual dimensions to them, these are able to be used with our fancy addition in the integrals. So this idea of having uh, these densities here is gonna be very, very helpful as we move forward in our next videos where we start looking at how can we add up a lot of these you know, infinitesimal charges or these charge densities for these weird shapes. Because all we've talked about thus far is you know, if I have point charges, how can I you know, get an E field or how can I get a potential? But what happens if I've got like some curvy rod and I want to find uh, potentials or E fields from that, you know, charge rod. What, what's going to happen there? So that's what we're going to take a look at um, in our next videos. But for right now, adios, and y'all take it easy.